On the morning of November 25th, 2019, a group of thieves carried out one of the most spectacular and shocking heists of recent times by breaking into one of the oldest museums in Europe to steal jewelry with an estimated value of about one billion euros. A manhunt is underway in Germany after thieves made off with a priceless haul of jewelry. Officials have released this surveillance video showing the thieves smashing a new museum. So far, um, reports here in Germany suggest that as much as a billion euros or 1.1 billion dollars could have been stolen. At the risk of sounding like I'm in a movie, <laughs> you think this was an inside job? News of the Green Vault raid inspired shock among local officials who say the collection is invaluable as part of the region's culture, history and identity. Das ist ja nicht nur der materielle Wert, sondern es ist der immaterielle Wert. It's not just about the material value, but also the immaterial value, which is inestimable for the state of Saxony. This is the story of how the thieves did it, the subsequent police investigation to find the culprits, and the ongoing search to recover the jewels. Dresden Castle, also known as the Royal Palace, is one of the oldest buildings in Dresden, Germany. Located in the center of the city, the castle is now a state art museum housing one of the largest art collections in Europe. The castle houses five museums, one of which is the Green Vault, which contains the largest treasure collection in Europe and features a variety of exhibits in styles from Baroque to Classicism. The most valuable piece in the entire Green Vault is the famous Dresden Green Diamond a 41 carat natural green diamond originated in the mines of India, which was luckily not in the vault during the night of the heist, as it was out on loan to the New York Metropolitan Museum of Art. Having been established in 1723, the green vault has a good claim to being the oldest museum in the world. The daring heist began in the early morning hours of Monday, November 25th, 2019. The thieves started a small fire at an electricity junction box located next to Augustus Bridge, just a stone's throw from the museum. The fire led to a power outage at the museum, disabling streetlights in the area, as well as the security alarm systems at the museum. The thieves then cut through the iron grill bars on a window on the ground floor to gain access to the museum's jewel room. The earlier fire had not disabled the museum's CCTV system, however, and the thieves were then captured on camera, entering the green vault and smashing the glass displays with an axe to gain access to the priceless jewelry collections behind them. During their short time in the Green Vault, the thieves were able to make off with hundreds of priceless artifacts from three 18th century jewelry sets, including diamonds, sapphires, emeralds, and rubies, as well as the 62 carat Dresden White Diamond, which alone is worth approximately 10 million euros. Among the other items stolen were the Star of the Order of the White Eagle, made in the 1740s with diamonds and rubies, a diamond hat clasp and epaulette, each containing hundreds of diamonds, and a sword and scabbard containing almost 1,000 diamonds. The heist lasted mere minutes. The vault's two security guards, who were on duty that night, say they saw the robbery happening on security monitors, but decided not to intervene a decision questioned by police, but later defended by the director of Dresden's State Art Collection, Marion Ackerman, 
who said they had followed the correct safety protocols. The security camera footage showed the thieves knew where they were going, and before making their escape, they sprayed the room with a powder fire extinguisher to cover their tracks. The police were called to the scene at 4.59 a.m. while the robbery was still in progress. However, when the first patrol car arrived five minutes later, the thieves were gone. Sixteen patrol cars in total were then dispatched in pursuit of the suspects. The robbers escaped the scene in a getaway car, which was then abandoned at an underground garage on Kolchenbroderstrasse, approximately three miles from the museum, and set on fire in an effort to destroy any DNA evidence left in the vehicle. And just like that, one of the most brazen and high-profile heists was complete, and the suspects disappeared into the night. The police operation, codenamed Operation Epaulette, named after one of the pieces that was stolen, began immediately after the heist. Later the same day, at 1 p.m., Dresden Police, the Public Prosecutor's Office, and the State Art Collection held a news conference to announce the theft to the public. The culprits, as you were able to see, got in through a window facing the palace square. There they cut through the grating and then smashed the glass before they went straight to one glass cabinet that they destroyed. They then left the building and disappeared. First indications point to a car which was possibly parked outside and with which they could have fled. The investigation likely began with detectives looking at the museum itself and in particular the security personnel. Roy Ram, a security consultant and former commander of special operations at New Scotland Yard in London, explained that in order to carry out such an audacious heist, the thieves must have had extensive inside knowledge of the inner workings of the museum, including and in particular what security measures were in place to thwart robbery attempts. He said it was conceivable that the thieves had done extensive research on the building in the lead-up to the robbery. Authorities discovered that the iron bars across the window where the thieves had gained access to the green ball were cut a few days before the heist took place and put back in place using glue until the night of the heist. The area where the window was located was not visible on security cameras and was in complete darkness. It was obvious that this robbery was meticulously planned and executed. By November 28th, the authorities had offered a 500,000 euro reward for information about the heist. And on December 1st, a police reenactment of the crime took place. More than 1,000 public tips came into police and forensic teams were able to find over 700 traces at three separate crime scenes, including properties in Berlin, believed to be connected to the robbery. They also found out where the getaway car was prepared before the heist, and were able to release a composite sketch of one of the suspects to the public. Police began focusing their search on the infamous Remo clan, one of Germany's most powerful crime families, which operates mostly in Berlin. In November 2020, police made three arrests and named two more suspects, 21-year-old twins Abdul Majed Remo and Mohammed Remo, as wanted in connection with the crime. Within days, Interpol had issued a red notice for the twins to be apprehended wherever they may be hiding. Mohammed Remo, was eventually caught in a car in the Berlin neighborhood of Neukölln, which is an area considered part of the Remo clan's turf. Abdul Majed was arrested five months later, in May 2021, when he was discovered in an apartment also in Neukölln. In August of the same year, one final sixth suspect was arrested, and all six were charged with crimes including serious gang theft, and arson. Two of the suspects were already known to police and are serving sentences for a separate crime, having previously been convicted 
of stealing a 100 kilo commemorative gold coin known as the Big Maple Leaf from Berlin's Boat Museum. The trial began on January 28th, 2022. In a dramatic twist, in May 2022, a seventh man was arrested in the courthouse while observing proceedings in the court as he was in possession of highly confidential documents that only police, state prosecutors, the court, the defense and the accused would have had access to, and he stood accused of aiding and abetting a criminal act. Prosecutors said all of the suspects have declined to respond to the accusations against them. It is one thing for the police to be able to apprehend and convict those responsible for the crime, but the question remains, where are the jewels? It is extremely difficult to sell such priceless artifacts as they cannot be sold on the legal market as they are too well known to collectors. It was thought the thieves would alter or break down the stolen jewelry in order to sell them on the black market, with museum officials begging the thieves not to damage or destroy the artifacts. Saxony's minister president, Mikhail Gretschmer, used Twitter to denounce the crime, saying, not only the state art collections were robbed, but we Saxons. Another possible motive for the crime would be to use the artifacts as a bargaining tool to get reduced sentences for later crimes. We have seen this happen in the past with thefts of famous artworks, but could this have been the motivation? A Tel Aviv-based security company, CGI Group, claimed in 2020 that the jewels were being sold on the black market after they had been offered two sets of jewels for 9 million euros. However, German authorities refuted this claim. CGI Group said they had been hired by the museum's management to look into the theft, but the Dresden State Art Collections has denied this. Despite numerous searches and years of investigation, none of the treasures have been recovered, and it is unclear whether or not we will ever see them again. The Green Vault at Dresden Castle remains open, and the cabinets from which the priceless jewels and treasures were stolen remain empty, awaiting the hopeful return of the jewels to their rightful place. <laughs>